Hi, I'm Callie from CRK Training Blog. I'm standing out here today with Thunder. And for today's blog video, I want to talk about everything that goes into a great ride. And this is one of the things that makes riding and working with horses such a unique sport and such a unique challenge. So we all probably have the picture in our head of just that perfect ride, that time where everything just feels right, your horse is responsive, you feel like you're connected to him, you're able to um, just ride with this effortless, balanced feeling. And it, you may have experienced this already and have some of those fleeting moments that just feel great and you just want to experience them again. Or it might just be that you're starting riding, but you can picture it. You know, you've seen the person on the beach or you've seen that um, great jumper or dressage rider or rainer and you just want to get there. But there's so many things that go into having a really good ride. And honestly, there can be a lot that even goes into creating that really great relationship with your horse. So let's go inside and we're going to talk about the four big categories that we have to be continually working on in order to be truly great riders. As we go through these four big parts, this kind of big picture of riding and of horsemanship, I would encourage you to think about things that you're already considering and working on. And also notice if there's some things up here that maybe you could give a little bit more attention to, especially if you're having some kind of a problem, a riding problem or a behavior or a training problem with your horse, if you can kind of step back and look at the big picture of everything that really goes into our horsemanship, sometimes you can find where that where that hole might be that is contributing to or causing that problem. So the first of these categories is riding. So when we think about riding, we first have body awareness. So that is basically just knowing where your body is at space. It's developing the ability to move well, and it's developing um, basic skills like balance. And then we also have fitness. So while you don't have to have huge muscles and be super strong to ride well, you do have to have a basic level of strength and the aerobic ability to be able to ride and do everything else that working with horses requires. And then of course we have the skills. So think about riding skills as the actual techniques. So knowing what to do to ask your horse for a halt or to ask for bending or learning, you know, how to move with your horse over a jump. And of course, when we're going through these different categories, it's not that these are sequential. These are things that were no matter what level you're at, you're always looking to improve all of these different things. And a lot of times they'll kind of improve together. So for example, as your skills start to improve, you probably develop a little bit more body awareness. But along the same line, if you do something else, maybe you do some yoga or some Pilates or you take up a martial art and you start to get a little bit more body awareness and better balance, that can also transfer to making learning the riding skills or techniques a lot easier for you. Now the next big category is understanding and relating to the horse. So the two main sections here are behavior and training. So under behavior, it's understanding how our horses uh, think differently than us, how they how their behavior, some of the basic like laws and principles of how behavior is uh, shaped, how behavior is changed, and also what things are just innate for the horse. So the three main components of what creates behavior is going to be genetics, it's going to be the environment, and then it's going to be past learning or experiences. And with training, again, there's some basic like science knows some basic laws of how learning happens and how training happens. But there's a lot of different philosophies out there. There's a lot of different techniques. So 
our job as the rider or as the horse person is really to figure out how we can best communicate what we want to our horse. And I like to think about training as being the same as relationship building or uh, creating a better connection with our horse. So my feeling is that when we are doing training well, it's the exact same thing as relationship building. And then of course we have the care of our horse. And I broke this into two main pieces the physical care so that's obviously things like nutrition making sure that the horse is physically comfortable for whatever level of athletic performance we're expecting of him and also making sure that any equipment that we're using like saddle fits him well and allows him to physically be able to do whatever we're asking but there's also a big emotional component that's part of care as well so in order for our horse to be in a good mental space for learning and for performing, we have to take care of them emotionally. And for horses, a big part of that is social interaction and just creating or allowing them to live in a way where their emotional needs, their social needs are met and where they can feel safe and comfortable enough to be in that good mental place for learning. And then we also have our mental space. So over here, we've got the idea of um, mental gain. And I think that this is a big component of anything, any kind of a, uh, a skill or a craft or an art that we go to learn. There is the peace of mindset. So you know, how do, we, how do we approach learning something new? Do we approach it with a positive mindset or do we go into it with negativity? And then having some emotional control and then also handling fear, nervousness, and anxiety. So you can see that there's a lot of connections that we could make through these. So for example, we have to be in a good mental space ourselves and we have to be able to have some emotional control many times when we are working with our horses in order to be able to train effectively. And we also have to understand how to have some emotional control and work with our um, fear and anxiety and know, be aware enough that we can kind of sense when our emotional level is changing and develop some strategies to manage that so that we can use the riding skills that we've learned. And of course, coming over here, if our horse is not um, physically comfortable, that's gonna be big time affecting his behavior. Or even emotionally, if he's scared, if he's worried, if, he, if we're working in an environment that's um, not easy for him, that's gonna be affecting his behavior as well. So these things are all very connected. And again, what I want you to do today is just give some thought to what areas could you potentially work on a little bit more? What could you improve, especially if you're having a problem? What we're gonna do is below this video, I'm gonna list out some resources for you. So I already have a number of resources that cover in more detail a lot of different areas of this uh, big picture. And then in the next few weeks, we're gonna dive in to a few more of these topics and get a bit more specific. So for example, next week, we're gonna talk about the big three questions to ask if you are having a problem so that you can start to figure out exactly which component of this big picture might be the first one for you to start working on. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please share it and make sure that you go to crktrainingblog.com. That's where all the best comments and the conversation happens and that's where I'll have that list for you of extra resources to go a little bit deeper on some of these topics. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next week.